I walked the Shards Labyrinth at Grace Cathedral, San Francisco some 30 years ago, and I was deeply moved by it, and I wanted to share it with my church. The four Shards shuffles. As I pondered the design, I discovered a fourfold shuffle pattern. Two on the inside, two on the outside. I put this pattern in my conscious memory, and with a few adjustments to the Shart's Labyrinth, I now walk the Shart's virtually. These insights are what I share with you. The Labyrinth has helped make my spirituality more of a reality. There are three principles to my spirituality. First of all, there is in all of us an unconditional inclusive presence. However, all of us do not always experience this presence. Our rational head sees the physical scene and creates our feelings. Our conscious heart senses the unseen spiritual and accesses our inner presence. Only the conscious heart can access our inner presence of peace, love, joy, and of wisdom. Walking the virtual Schartz Labyrinth. Who'd be interested in using a labyrinth? Some therapists, clergy, and spiritual directors use them to counsel clients and lead groups. Labyrinths are too far away to be of any use. You can walk them anytime. Where can you do that? Virtually anywhere. Walking the Schartz Labyrinth virtually there's the physical Schartz Labyrinth, and there's the virtual Labyrinth design. And the physical Schartz has people standing and walking and praying through it, but the uh, virtual Labyrinth has people walking outdoors or indoors with no particular design. Virtual means different form, but the same essence, and it takes an open mind, heart, commitment, and common sense. Breaking the code of the Shard's Labyrinth for the first time. I'm not sure if anybody's done this before or not, but you can do it with the Shard's Shuffle, which I call. It it's a, comes as a design coming out of the Shard's Labyrinth itself. And there are four shuffles. And here is an actual pe picture of people walking a virtual Labyrinth Shuffle. how to walk a Schartz shuffle. There's a loop, which is a long, long loop, and then there's a shuffle, which is short, short, long, short, short. Put them together, you have a left Schartz shuffle, which is different from the right because the right starts with a shuffle. So we have a short, short, long, short, short shuffle, and then uh, the loop, which is a long, long loop, and you put those two together, and you have a, a mirror, then, of a right Schartz shuffle. There's what I call a virtual labyrinth sh starter. You have the left shuttle and you have the right short shuttle. And when you put the two together, you have your basis for the entire virtual shorts labyrinth shuffle. This is just the starter. The virtual labyrinth starter is critical in terms of going on to the Schartz Labyrinth. Going in, uh, you come around, and then you come into the center. When you come out, you reverse yourself, and so your mind cannot just have a particular diagram because now we're starting on the outside rim as we come all the way around and in. There are three steps, which are the basics for the Labyrinth. Put this image in your rational mind and then embed it into your conscious heart. Take your time to do this before proceeding further until you don't need any help with a map. When you're able to do that, it becomes virtual. Step one, when we're not conscious of our inner presence, our rational head creates our feelings 
about what happens to us. When we rationally go into the center and we take our most disturbing problem with us, we are human beings on a spiritual journey because our spirituality depends on how we feel and think about our journey and what happens to us. And so here's a picture of people walking inside rationally as they uh, come to the center of the labyrinth. Step two, the labyrinth teaches us how to discover what we're looking for inside and not outside ourselves. Coming in the loops and the curves wear down our rational head and it opens up our conscious heart. Take time when you get to the center to discover consciously the God spot that is not just in the center but also that is inside ourselves. We do this by wondering what difference being in the peace presence makes now than when we were out as we first came in. Step three, coming out consciously in the presence, gives us a wisdom on how to think about our situation. We are now spiritual beings on a human journey because our journey depends on our spiritual feeling of the peace presence that is in us. And here is a picture of those people coming out uh, from the center. walking the full virtual labyrinth. When you have been able to make the trip in and out consciously in the basic form, the next step after going in and coming out is to make a loop around the outside of your labyrinth and go around for a second time. It is important that you're able to do this a second time. Once you do that, when you come out and you have a loop around your basic shuttle, take a right, take a right this time, and you'll suddenly realize you have a full virtual labyrinth completed. Now you're ready to check out the Shard's Labyrinth. Memorize the virtual image in your rational mind and then embed it in your conscious heart. Follow the virtual image in your mind several times a day as well as walking it. Where will I be ready to walk the charts when walking the virtual labyrinth has meaning to you? Well, why not walk the charts even if the virtual is not meaningful? Why not just waste your time? Think of the virtual labyrinth as a labyrinth within, within a labyrinth. It's uh, underneath the charts labyrinth, and it contains over 90% of the charts labyrinth. Its four similar patterns make it possible to learn as we have learned to ride a bike or to swim. We start out with a full left inside shuffle and then uh, we move over to the right side and do a full right inside shuffle. And then we circle these two shuffles to start again and we come out with a full left outside shuffle and that leads to a full right outside shuffle. The Shark's Labyrinth fits on top and following the pattern we have to make alterations to two of the shuffles. Walk the Shark's Labyrinth takes a lot of common sense because there are some adjustments that have to be made. First of all, when we first come in, there is a loop and there, when we get into the center, there's a loop. So there's two bottom loops that must be compensated and adjusted to when we do the Shark's Labyrinth. Because of the two bottom loops, there is what I like to call the Shark's Bounce on the upper loops as well. And when they come around, they hit, they have to go back. And there's a bounce there, and there is an, another bounce on the other side. There's a one line outside shuffle, it loses the line. And there's a one line inside right shuffle, and the other two shuffles are full shuffles. 
There is what I like to call the life of the pace as we go out in the peace presence. We need to stay conscious of that presence as we're coming out and we begin to find some wisdom after we're through with the labyrinth. A labyrinth is not a game, it's an important tool. It offers a spiritual awakening. It is a help in discovering what people are looking for inside themselves rather than depending upon things and other people outside. It is for those seeking peace, love, happiness, and direction in their lives. It can be used to overcome anxieties from post-traumatic stress disorders, painful memories, and issues of abuse. It can be helpful for rehabilitation from addictions. The main advantage of a virtual labyrinth is that it can be walked anytime, in any place, and under any conditions, and it can be walked in a four by eight space from a living room to a prison cell. The labyrinth is purely spiritual. The walker determines what the religion is. I'm afraid of walking the labyrinth because I don't want to change my religion. The labyrinth does, does not change your religion, it changes you. What is your religion? I'm a pagan atheist. No worries, you're safe. Pause and print the handheld labyrinth maps. Walk within until the labyrinth becomes virtual.